You just take on a and stop it, but you never want to block a, pee, a pawn with a piece. You want to block with a knight. But if you block with a knight, it's going to get pinned. There's back rank problems as well. I think this position is miserable for Artem, and he doesn't even have time to think of his next two moves. Is rook c1 just coming yeah. in, pinning that knight? Bishop g5, advance to d pawn. That pawn's queening. The a4 bishop defends that d1 square. This looks absolutely busted for Artem. Yeah. You're totally right, Tanya. Just don't even think here if you're Magnus Carlsen. Drop that black rook onto the white first rank and White is paralyzed. Yeah. White just can barely move. Uh, you can't even trade rooks. Rook c2 is impossible. You can't come back with the rook to d1. That rook on c1 will be an absolute monster. What is Magnus thinking? Maybe is what's the alternative? Well, there are actually so many good moves <laughs> in this position. <laughs> that's, the yeah. that's the problem for Magnus. That's the problem for Magnus. But when in doubt, pin and win. <laughs> just drop that black rook down to c1, and that should be game over soon. First, he uh, attacks the white rook. I don't think this changes anything. He's maybe just testing Artemiev. He's saying, okay, you have nine seconds. I'm going to flick in a little threat. <laughs> Did you see it? He might push the pawn, right? So he just attacked the rook. You push the pawn. The dark square bishop will come across the board as well into the c3 square, hitting the rook and the knight. Notice they're on the same diagonal there as well. I think Magnus is playing this perfectly. I mean, bishop takes f6. That was a head scratcher. But since then, it, Magnus makes it look easy. It, it wasn't as simple as it appeared. And he's just bringing all of his pieces into the party. And, and it's a party for one. Artemiev not invited. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, Robert. And, uh, okay, he's still struggling on. He's limping on in this game, uh, Artemiev. Okay, he's at least broken the pin. He's trying to trade off a set of pieces. Remember, that does guide you towards safety if you're struggling, uh, especially uh, if you can get a set of bishops off. The remaining bishop will lose power, but Magnus, of course, won't trade unless it really suits him. He's looking to cash in on some material, and yeah. uh, that might well happen soon. You're thinking about moves like d3, which are possible. Get that bishop to c3. There's still a pin on the first track. Magnus in driving seat and Artemia with just six seconds on the clock. This is the big moment for Magnus Carlsen to strike back. Yeah. It feels like self-destruct mode from yeah. Magnus in the first game and then Artemiev in this one. And that was that moment of trading that bishop on f6. That was a shocking decision, even if it was the clock that made him do it. It makes no sense at all. Yeah, it goes against the principles, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, of course. Yeah, he, you, you want to stay principled here, and he did not. He could have made any move, maybe h3, just make a quick move just to get some time on the clock here. But this is busted. Game over, start a new one, right? He's going to have to just reset and try to uh, come back in the next game because Magnus is uh, going to win this one. Can he actually go d3 here? Can he start pushing the deep on, David? Not the same. Yes, Tanya. <laughs> yes. I think that's uh, one of multiple winning moves here. The black light square bishop can also drop back, hit that oh, white God. rook in the center, but you're, you're, what? Uh -huh. you're right. You called <laughs> it. it. And this looks like it's walking into trouble, this move. This you can't c3. play that, bro. Yeah, the two white rooks are both on dark squares. Black has a dark square bishop. There must be a knockout blow right now. I'm not sure which diagonal to use. I can attack both your rooks. I can attack your rook from every angle that I want. And that's what happens when you give up a dark sword bishop. He goes straight into d4. He's attacking the rook on e3. He's trying to kick it away from this pass pawn on d3. If the rook slides over, then knight loses defender. If the rook goes up the board, then the problem is the d3 pawn is safe and sound, and that black bishop will likely go into c3 next. I feel like white is about to lose material and the game, and Magnus is going to be right back in this match, not up one-to-one. -one. And you're right, Robert. Actually, Vladislav didn't even struggle on. He resigned. He hit the resi and, uh, button. He hit the button. Yeah, we're tied. 1-1. One, one. Magnus strikes back. Wow. Beautiful. And what a game this